Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. This is the first of a two-part video in this tutorial where I will be showing you how to create this retro badge sticker in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. But before I go into the details, I just want to quickly explain to you my inspiration. Um, I was out in Shoreditch, East London, the other night, and I was in a pub, and there's lots of really interesting pubs in East London, and this one happened to have lots of character. It was, it, there were stickers and cool sort of graffiti all over the wall, and one of the stickers stood out to me, and it reminded me of my childhood. I used to collect these sort of stickers and badges, and I just thought, oh, I'd love to have a go at making one. So I've put this video tutorial together to share with you my process. So how are we going to do this? We will be primarily working in Illustrator, but we will be using Photoshop just to um, prepare the image, and I'll show you that in a, in a second. But first of all, this is what we are going to end up with in this drawing. We're going to, here's our uh, Frankenstein face. Um, this is a live trace from a sketch which I have previously done on paper. And um, I use the live trace tool because I wanted to create this uh, effect. As you can see, the lines are very bold, um, not too much detail, just really bold. It is, this is the exact effect that I would like to go for. Okay, so let's get started. My first step was to start on paper. Um, I used a thick black marker and I used that to sketch out the, the illustration. I used the thick black marker because I wanted to encourage those thick black lines. I wanted some nice big strokes. Um, I just wanted to keep it simple to capture the essence of my Frankenstein face. Referring to my inspiration image um, because I wanted to try and achieve that retro look. Basically, just trying to keep it bold and simple. Then once I was happy with my drawing, I literally took a quick photo of it using my iPhone and imported it into Photoshop as you can see here. Now this is my drawing and you can see that it's a bit rough around the edges and before we take it into Illustrator there's just a few things that I would like to do to this to prepare it, to optimize it so we can uh, get a nice effect in Illustrator. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the image. So I'm going to come over to my crop tool in the menu and I'm quickly going to crop this image. So uh, let's get a good look at this. And then what I am going to do next is literally go to adjustments and levels and I'm just going to push the levels up just to get rid of that awful grey texture in the background that came through from the, the photograph there and that is looking much better and I'm going to go to image mode and grayscale and that's just fine now that is looking quite good but there's a few things in this image I'm not entirely happy about um, it's a bit rough around the edges around the outline as you can see um, I'm not really liking this bit of detail there it looks a bit messy and there's a few things I just need to tidy up so I'm quickly going to tidy this up just going to grab my uh, paintbrush tool here, myself a medium brush, oops, um, it's a bit big there, let's bring that down, there you go, I'm just going to get rid of some of this info, I don't really need this, this here, it's, it's a bit messy, so again, make my brush a bit smaller, just getting rid of some of this detail here, because that's going to prove problematic when we take it into Illustrator. And yeah, as you, you, you sort of get my idea, I'm just going to go around the image and clean it up. And then after a little while, you'll have a cleaner image. But I just want to do some final tweaks as I removed some of that black line data. But now you can see that there's some white patches in the black. So I'm just going to quickly change my brush to black and just fill in some of these white areas to make the image nice and clean for when we take it into Illustrator just quickly fill in these black lines and as you can see here you could, this is going to prove very problematic in Illustrator so I'm just going to join these up together 
So that will be nice and solid. Okay, and that looks just fine now. I think that is ready to take into Illustrator. But quickly before that, we are going to save this image. File, save as, and we're going to call it drawing and save it to the desktop. And we're going to make sure that the quality is as high as it could possibly be and click OK. Now, we're going to come back into Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. I'm going to make this A4 and portrait. OK. And with our new canvas, we are going to go to File, Place, and select that drawing from the desktop. Now, at the moment, that is looking a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. With my selection tool, I'm going to put my mouse cursor over the edge, pressing Shift and Alt, holding Shift and Alt, I can click on my mouse and drag it down to scale it precisely to the size I'd like. So that is looking nice. Okay, so now it is time to use our Live Trace tool. I'm going to click the image and I'm going to come up to Live Trace and just click it once. And as you can see, at a click of a button, we've got our Live Trace effect applied. But I'm not entirely happy with that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top menu and just put the minimum area down to zero. And I'm going to, with the image selected, I'm going to come to the threshold and bring it down to around 78 and click off. And you can see that as we tweak the threshold, the, the level of detail and stroke cha strokes changes. If we push it up to 255, we see that we get more quality. If we move it down to 6, we get very, very thin lack of quality. So what I'm going to do is try and find something around, around about 80. 80, and I think I'll be happy with that. Um, and then next, what I'm going to do is click on Expand and that will expand our live trace. Um, it, groups, it groups the object. When you click on expand, it groups the object. So what we'll need to do next is go to object and ungroup and then click off. And then what you'll notice is you've got your individual components of the live trace. And we're almost done with this image. We're almost ready to take it through to coloring. But before that, there's a few things I just need to do to prepare it a little further. I'm going to come over to my direct selection tool and I'm going to just click on the outside area. There's a white box which came from the live trace. We, don't, we won't be needing that. I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to zoom into the eyes, pressing Z to zoom hotkey. I'm just going to zoom into the eyes because I want to prepare the eyes a little bit because I'm not entirely happy with them right now. If we click on the eye and move, we can see that there's remnants of that white space within. If I do that to the other eye, we can, we can see that there. If I get my direct selection tool and just move my mouse cur cursor over the path of that area, I can click once. If I just press delete once and again, that'll delete that area. So now we have a black solid eye section. And the same applies for the right eye. Click on the path. Press delete once and again, and we have cleared that area. If I come back to my selection tool and click on the eyes, we can move these around within the space. And what I'm going to do quickly is just change the size of these to make them a little bit bigger. So they're a little bit more bigger. Let's zoom out a little bit and see how they look. Okay, maybe a little bit big. Make them a little bit smaller, and I'm happy with that. And finally, I'm going to come over to my ellipse tool and make sure that my color is set to black. And I'm going to draw a little ellipse. That's the eyeball. Click on that once, edit, copy, edit, paste, and move the eye back into position. Let's fit the canvas. 
And I think that's looking just fine. And lastly, I'm just going to select everything. Just squash it in a little bit so it looks a little bit more chunky. And I'm going to zoom in just to take a closer look. And there's our finished live trace, ready for the next stage. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Next up, I'll be showing you how I took this drawing forward and how I coloured our character and finished the sticker. If you're interested, click on this button now and you can jump straight to that video or you can find the link in the description.